run. Just run. Hi guys, it's Adam and welcome to another video. So in today's video, I've got a longer sales update for you because I've not done a sales update in, well actually two weeks today, I think it was the 3rd of May my last one and now it's 17th. Um, so yeah, I'm going to do a little, little bit more of a bulk one. I think I've got like 15, 20 sales or something I've pulled out, maybe 17, 18, something like that. I've not pulled out everything. I've pulled out specifically like mainly £20 and up items just so it's a bit more exciting for people. I've had quite a lot of sales that are like £10, £12.99, £14.99, as I always do. Um, but I did have a fair few, you know, £20 and up sales over the past couple of weeks, particularly over the last six days or so, six or seven days. It's been really, really good for me. I don't know why that is. Um, but yeah, without further ado, we shall get on with this and I will share with you the first item, which is this uh, Staffordshire flatback figure here, the death of Nelson. Now, I don't know, I think, I, no, I don't know whether I've talked about this actually, but it seems that a lot of these Staffordshire figures, I'm sure the one, there are ones that are worth good money still, but a lot of these seem to not be doing like amazing at the moment. I don't know why that is, um, but for the ones that I've had more recently, um, I've looked upon solds, I've looked on, looked on completing solds, and they just don't seem to be going for that much money, which is quite sad to see, because I actually, like, when I first saw the Staffordshire figures, I thought to myself, mm, I'm not too, you know, I'm not too keen on them, but then over time, I've kind of got to like them more and more, and uh, it is a bit of a shame that they're not going for brilliant money, but still, I got 20 quid for this one here, plus my postage, it came in an auction job lot, I'm guessing roughly it would have cost me about three or four pound this figure as an individual cost in the job lot, but I can't be too sure because it was a little bit of a while ago this figure and um, I don't know the job lot it came in or anything, I've completely forgot, but it wouldn't be any, I can't see it being any more than that as an individual cost really, so that's that one there. Next we've got something that I got from a charity shop. Um, Probably a month and a half ago, a month ago, a month and a half ago, something like that. Uh, this is this vintage Italian Venezia hand-painted signed, sort of like a, a wall plaque or sort of like wall decor. Um, and yeah, it's obviously Venice. Really, really nice. Um, £24.99 there, plus my postage. Uh, paid £2 for it in a charity shop. It's a lovely little hand-painted item. I knew there was going to be at least about 20 quid in it. Um, and I ended up just whacking it on at 25 quid just because I thought, oh, I may as well put an extra fiver on it. And uh, yeah, it did go. Now, there was actually two of these on. It was slightly different design, but from the same artist and everything. Um, basically, two of them were on for like 18 quid plus postage. But I completely ignored that person because I thought, you know what, I think, I think it's worth a little bit more than that. So despite two of them actually being on for 18 pound plus post... I still managed to get 25 quid just for one of them. So always kind of go with your gut instinct because just because, you know, someone's got something on price quite low, it doesn't mean it's necessarily worth that. And there was no, I don't think there was any sold or completed information on these. So I thought, you know what, I could go lower than that person on this item and I'd probably get the sale really, really quickly. But in this situation, I thought to myself, you know what? I'm just going to go high anyway because there's only one other one on. And I didn't mind waiting on it. I was prepared to wait. And to be honest, I didn't even need to wait that long. So I was, I was pretty happy with that one. So yeah, that's that one there. Next, we've got these vintage Power Rangers action figures. Now, I got these in a huge job lot of action figures that I actually got off eBay. Um, I think they cost me... I think it was like 146 all in. There was loads of Ghostbusters ones in there. There was a little, you know, Ghostbusters Slimer figure. There was loads of Thundercats and stuff. There was loads of, uh, not really any decent Thundercats stuff, but there was some, like, generic Thundercats figures and stuff. There was, uh, oh, what's the other one? The... He-Man, the main one in the 80s. Uh, or one of the main ones in the 80s. So there was a load of He-Man in there. Uh, oh, you know, loads of other just general figures, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, all the kind of standards, like 80s and 90s stuff that we all know. Um, and yeah, I was surprised that um, these went these went pretty quickly. 
Um, but also, I was surprised at the value that I got for these. I didn't think these figures would be this valuable. Now, they are fairly large figures. They're not really, really large ones or anything, but they're maybe a little bit bigger than a standard sort of action figure size. Um, and yeah, they're really nice, actually. One of them had his gun. I don't, I don't think I've actually put it in the photos. I think I did put it in the description, though. But the Red Ranger did have his gun. Um, so it would have been nice to get all the others with the guns and I would have charged a little bit more. Um, but yeah, 34 99 So that just goes towards paying for the job lot at this point because at the moment I'm trying to just get my money out of that job lot and then go into profit. Um, but yeah, quite a cool job lot. Uh, I'm trying to think what else there was in there because there was a few other bits and bobs, a few other different uh, styles of figures in there but from a few different lines but I can't quite remember but loads of just like 80s stuff really, 80s and 90s. Um, so yeah, that was those. Next we've got this vintage Allerton's hand-painted floor design wash jug and bowl. Really nice item this. Um, really, you know, like sort of heavy duty kind of like stoneware kind of thing. Uh, really... Um, you know, as I say, really heavy duty. It's not going to break incredibly easily or anything like that. Uh, $29.99 on that, plus my postage. I got this in a job lot. I can't remember. I think it was like 10 or £15 pound plus commission with a couple of other things in the box. But this was like the main feature of the box. And uh, yeah, $29.99 plus my postage on that. So yeah, pretty happy with that. It did take... I want to say... I don't know. I can't remember when I got it. It, it wasn't... Year. It wasn't like a year or anything like that, but it was probably a few months. It did take a few months to go, but yeah, that's that one there anyway. Next, we've got this vintage wooden hand-carved African tribal style figure of a man. This was... It was from a tribal job lot that I got in the auction, you know, like a wooden carved figures job lot, job lot souvenir pieces, etc., things like that. I can't remember whether this one was in, um, like, a job lot that I got Oh no, I do rem I do remember where this one is. It's so hard keeping track of auction job lots because I get so many of them, and because I write them down, as many of you will be will will be aware, because I write them down in my black book and on my uh, profit and loss as a bulk cost, like I paid three hundred and forty seven pound for all my auction haul or whatever. I don't necessarily remember, I don't need to remember where, which things I got in which job lots and all that, so it can get very messy and trying to recall them from this, for these sales updates can be quite hard, but no, I do remember where I got these from. I got them uh, out of a job lot, there was three, bo no, two boxes of uh, like tribal figures and stuff like that and trinkets and souven souvenir bits and bobs and everything, um, and I think I paid £15, either £15 or £20 plus commission for one of those job lots. And this was in there. Really, really lovely piece. I've not had it for too long because that job lot was only like the auction before last or something, something like that. So not terribly long. And yeah, I put this on at twenty four ninety nine. Now a lot of people, um, I have. Well, I say I say a lot of people. I've had a few people in the comments say to me, "Oh, them figures and stuff aren't worth anything. You may as well not bother with them." I plead with you. I plead with everyone. Look, I, I go along my own route, I sell what I sell, and in, for the most part, I get the results. Some things do, don't work out, but for the most part, I get the results. So please do look at the fact that I've got 25 quid for this tribal figure, and think to yourself, if you know tribal figures are what you might want to sell, please be aware that you can get some money for them, you know. I'm not making this stuff up. I'm not saying I'm not saying to you, oh, yeah, I'm going to get £10 or £15 or £20 for this and just not get it. I will get it, as you can see here in this example. So, yeah, these tribal figures are worth money. This one was worth a little bit more money because, as you can see here, it's a uh, more desirable carving. It's just, the carving is very, it's just nice and rustic. It's everything you want in a figure. It's really nice looking figure, this one. There are some figures that you may have seen on my channel that aren't as well done or they're, they're, not, they're not as brilliant. So therefore, those ones I only charge 10, 12 quid for. But this one was quite a nice one. So yeah, 24 99 plus my postage on that one. Next, something really, really cool. I paid a fiver for this in a charity shop a while ago. This is a vintage New Zealand Imperial Bee Honey metal and glass container, um, obviously for honey. And it's really, really unusual. Um, I don't know, can you see on the bottom here? Yeah, New Zealand Imperial Bee Honey. Absolutely cool item. 
um, and I couldn't leave this at the charity shop. They originally had it stickered up at like 20 quid, but it was in there for ages and ages, not selling, and I wasn't going to pay 20 quid for it. Um, and yeah, they had it up for ages in the charity shop at that, and then they reduced it down. Um, so yeah, I took it for a five. It's got this little kind of like a, a man who's a bee on the top there, which is pretty cool. But it's absolutely so unusual, so different, so cool. I didn't know what I could get for it when I bought it. I thought to myself, it's definitely worth like 25, 30 quid. But I wasn't, I, uh, beyond that, I wasn't sure. You know, I really wasn't sure. But I thought to myself, you know what? I'm going to put this on high. I'm going to put it on at 50 quid. Because this is unique. This is unusual. This is something cool. Um, so that's what I did. And then I must have brought it down to 44.99 at some point. And that's when it uh, when someone's obviously snapped it up. Now, obviously, with these items, you're looking for the right sort of collector. You're looking for the right sort of person. Um, but yeah, really, really cool on this one. 44.99 plus my postage. Yeah, just really, really interesting item to be honest. So yeah, that's that one there. Next, we've got this Freddy versus Jason versus Ash paperback, uh, Wildstorm, Evil Dead comic type thing. This was in a job lot that I got from the same charity shop as that um, B thing, actually, that you just saw. Um, and I got it in a job lot of anime books, comics. There was a Trunky in there as well. Basically, we did like a bundle deal. And I got it in that bundle deal for, I think it was £50 the bundle deal came to. Either £45 or £50, something like that. Um, and yeah, this one was like basically the best piece out of the job lot. So yeah, I got 60 quid for that. That basically covers the majority of the job lot. I have since sold the Trunky for, I believe, 20 quid plus postage. I've got another uh, three, maybe two or three uh, books to sell that are around £20, something like that. I've got another, I've got a few bundles of anime books still to sell. And I've got a couple of other little bits and bobs. Oh, no, I sold a uh, Lion King brand new and sealed DVD box set, Blu-ray box set, Lion King uh, for 16 quid as well. That was out of the same job lot. So, yeah, quite a lot out of that job lot. It's pretty good. Um, but this one was like the highlight in peace. And I'm so glad that it sold. And there you go, 59.99 on that one. So, pretty happy. Uh, next, we've got something that I took a punt on. This was in the, this was in my nearest charity shop, which is literally just five minutes down the road. I'm quite lucky to have a charity shop so close. Um, but yeah, uh, this one was £2, local charity shop. And uh, it's this, like, I think it's hand-knitted. or ha It's certainly handmade. I don't, I, I don't know. It must have been hand-knitted or something. Um, but it's this, like, really colourful uh, scarecrow plush. Oh, I've just had another sale. £16.09. Mm, that's okay, I suppose. Um, so yeah, uh, this was like handmade kind of thing. Um, soft plush toy, as you can see here. Fourteen ninety nine plus my postage. I just picked it up. I thought for two quid, that's a nice looking little put plush. I think I could get some money for that. And uh, yeah, it turns out these do go for okay money. Like you, I mean, people would go into a charity shop. This is a prime example of where someone goes into a charity shop and they they would miss this item. They would completely ignore this item. A lot of people. But this, you know, this is what you've got to do as a reseller. You've got to be aware of things that other people may miss. You've got to kind of jump outside uh, different maybe comfort zones or areas that you, you think might might be, uh, might give you money. You know, like I previously when I've seen these, I didn't think anything of them. But it was this on one this, this one occasion I thought, oh, I like the look of that one. And then I was searching them. So I could have missed out on getting quite a bit of profit out of a lot of these that I've seen in other charity shops and stuff. But, yeah, so it's always worth just, you know, jumping outside your comfort zone or, or just looking into different things in the charity shop um, because you may get a surprise and things might be worth money. So two quid into 15 quid went within... We're definitely within two weeks, but maybe within a week actually. So uh, yeah, really, really happy on that one. Next, we've got this Lego Brickheads four one six two five Disney Mini the Mouse uh, sixty seven. Now, I think this was like I don't know whether it was like a completely limited edition one, but. I don't know, I think there was some sort of limited edition kind of tied to this one, uh, this Brickheads. Um, and yeah, I got 29 99 for that pretty quickly. I would have gone for 34 99 however, it did just have a bit of wear on the box. I don't know whether you'll, you can probably see there, the box is slightly caving in a little bit. I would have gone for a little bit higher, but I know that this is, might be going to a collector and they're going to be... A bit annoyed if there's a little bit of a thing in the box. So I thought I'll just I'll just put it down by a few quid, and I'm happy with that. 
Um, I paid £2.50 in a charity shop, so very little investment for me. £2.50 into £29.99. Again, something that went very, very quickly within a couple of weeks, maybe three weeks at maximum. And yeah, I was really, really happy with that. So nice little sale there. Next, another item for £29.99. It seems like we've had quite a few for £29.99 on this uh, sales update. And I think we've got another one or two for £29.99 as well. Um, but this is the all, uh, Vintage Only Headwear Straw Boating Hat with black slash white uh, ribbon, 57 centimeters there. This was in the hat job lot I got ages ago and well into profit on that job lot. So after postage and fees, this is pure profit. $29.99 plus my postage. Really, really happy with that one. Lovely quality hat. Very, very sturdy. Very, very strong. Uh, it's properly made. You know, it's not one of those uh, boating hats that you know, a bit more cheaper and a bit flimsy. This one is a very well-made one. Um, so yeah, $29.99 on that, lovely. Next, we've got this Engineering in Miniature, five brown binders. This was like 1990 to 1994. These were like various issues of magazines from those years. Now, I didn't get 70 quid. I had these on for a very long time. I had these on for a year or so, maybe even a little bit longer. I believe I paid a fiver in a charity shop. I can't recall completely but I think it was £5, which was a very good price if I did pay £5. It's it making me think I paid more than that, to be honest. Maybe, maybe I paid a tenner or something, but I don't think it was much more than a tenner, if, uh, if anything. But something's telling me a fiver. I don't know why. But, yeah, I didn't get 70 quid. I got £50 plus my postage because I was more than happy to take a lower offer on these because I had had them for so long. Um, but, yeah, you know, 50... 50 quid plus my postage, pretty happy with that, although it did take quite a while to go, um, you know, I'm not too bothered because it's slightly higher value item, so I'm not bothered wait about waiting too, too much on the higher value stuff or slightly higher value range anyway, so yeah, £50 plus my 7 99 postage on those. Next, we've got two items from my most recent auction haul, I got these in two separate job lots, uh, were these two separate job lots or were these two the same? No, I think these were two separate silver plate job lots. One, actually I think both of them I paid £25 plus commission for each. So one of them was £25 plus commission, other one was £25 plus commission. So these might just about get me in profit on those job lots or very close to being in profit on those job lots and the rest of the stuff out of those job lots will then be pure profit. So we've got here vintage vines of Sheffield, twin handle silver plate engraved design tray. Obviously quite a large tray. I'll see if I've got any measurements. I have indeed uh, 57 uh, centimeters in length and this one is 29 centimeters in width there. Now I always include measurements or well I say always, sometimes I forget but 95% of the time I include measurements on all my ceramics and stuff and I still and all my you know metalware and stuff that I feel needs measurements uh, also some plush toys and stuff now I still get a ton of messages saying what are the measurements on this and it really does annoy me but at least you know, I like being conscientious in that way. I like providing that information on the photos. Because even if you do get uh, questions like that, you can just go back to the photos and then click on the photo and think, oh, well, I know the measurement for this anyway. So you don't need to get it out of storage if you do that anyway. Um, or you could simply not message a person back with the actual measurement, but just say to them, oh, look, the measurements are in the photos or something like that. Um, but I suppose I, I have a... <laughs> I, I I don't know. It's something within me that I don't like saying that to people because it feels like I'm kind of shunting them off and saying, oh, you do the work. Uh, and when they're my customer, you know, I like to say, well, oh, you know, don't worry, I'll get the measurements for you or whatever. You know, it's not a very, you know, the customer is king, that sort of stuff. That's always been the mentality that I've uh, applied with, with my reselling. You know, I've always tried to do right by my customers. And we all know that the saying the customer is always right isn't actually true. But you have to apply it as such when you're dealing with customers. Otherwise, they're not going to want to do business with you. They're not going to. Uh, they're not going to particularly like you in a, in a circumstance that's problematic. You know. Whereas at, at least if you kind of live by that philosophy, um, even if a customer isn't right, but you just deal with the situation, you get over it, etc. Then they're going to be happy. You're going to be happy in, at the end of the day, and it's going to be a much better transaction essentially. Um, but yeah, so twenty nine ninety nine on this one. Pretty happy with that lovely little tray here I'm sure you'll agree nice little one maybe I could have gone a bit higher because this did sell fairly quick you know within 
Oh, I don't know. Well, within a week. I know it was within a week. So, yeah, maybe I could have gone a bit high on this. Maybe twenty, uh, maybe $34.99, $39.99. I'm not sure. Maybe I could have done. With it being Viners as well, you know. I, I was I was like that on my pricing with these. I was thinking, should I go that like extra five or ten quid or, or should I leave it, you know. So, next time I'm definitely going to be going that extra five or ten quid. But, yeah. Next is this vintage lot. Ah, here we go. This, this is the one that I've got gone for 30, 39 on. And rightly so on this one because this was very nice. Um, so, this is a vintage large engraved design silver plate twin handle serving tray. Ah, this one wasn't Viner's though. No, it wasn't Viner's. So, really lovely design to this. Really, really nice. I'm sure you'll agree on this one again. Um, thirty nine ninety nine plus my poetry. So I was, I'm glad I've actually gone thirty nine or ninety nine on that one because that one definitely deserved forty pound. Definitely. Uh, maybe even you could have said push a little bit higher than that. But this one didn't take. This one didn't go as quickly. This one went within three weeks, two or three weeks, something like that. So I'm pretty sure I got the price pretty bang on with this. And uh, definitely, I'm glad I actually priced this at 39.99 because a minute ago I was thinking that I'd actually priced this one at 29.99 as well. But no, um, I would have been a bit annoyed if I, if if I'd let this go for 30 quid rather than 40 because it is nice. Um, but yeah, that one's really nice, 40 quid plus my postage. That will then actually bring me into profit on the other job lot that I got then because this is 39.99, not 29.99. And if the job lots cost me 25 plus commission, yeah, it'll, it'll be around just about in profit so everything else from that job lot now is just pure profit on top which I'm happy about because when that happens from basically like the first sale out of a job lot it's very nice because you think oh well you know there's nothing to worry about I'm in profit or I'm pretty much there um, and I've got all this stuff left to sell it's kind of like a, a nice sort of security feeling or a safety blanket feeling that is you know, it is quite nice. So, yeah, anyway, so that's that one. So that is all the sales I'm going to share with you today. Uh, a really nice mix of items today. Some better value items going out recently. Some strong sales at the moment. Yeah, I can't complain really. My listing is still a little bit inconsistent. I do need to try and pick up the listing a little bit more. Um, but to be honest, I mean... As long as I, I'm trying to get, you know, like, I, my aim for each week is around 50 items, something like that. Because at this point now, I'm kind of just maintaining and growing maybe a little bit, growing my store a little bit. But I'm not, like, striving for the moon with it or anything like that. Um, I'm just simply, for whatever reason at the moment, I'm just in this state of maintaining things, moving forward slowly, but I'm not killing myself with my reselling. I'm not... You know, I'm not, uh, like, trying to grow and grow and grow and grow, etc. Because I've been doing that for so many... I've been doing that for, like, three, four years or so now. But, you know, I do want a bit of a time where I can slow down. And I've got a bit more of that luxury now because I'm in a little bit better place with my reselling in terms of, um, you know, I've got a, a strong inventory there, etc. So, yeah, I'm aiming for, like, 50 a week. Some weeks I don't do that. Other weeks I do more than that. So it kind of balances out. Um, but, yeah, so I, I am a bit inconsistent with my listing on certain weeks. So I do need to... Just change that a little bit, just get into gear slightly more. But at the same time, I'm just enjoying what I'm doing as well because you've got to enjoy what you do. You don't want to kill yourself for it, you know. I mean, you kind of, there's not really much of a way around killing yourself in the beginning. When you're starting up a business, you kind of need to give it your all. You kind of need to put a fair bit into it. I mean, there's ways around it. You can do it slowly and stuff, but, you know, if you want it to grow at a fairly decent speed, you need to put a fair bit of work into it at least so there's not much of a way around that at the beginning but when you get slowly you know building inventory and you know building sales etc you can start to relax a little bit more and that's kind of what I'm slowly doing a little bit now I'm not being complacent but I am just getting into that you know just chilling a little bit with it and I'm very comfortable with my ability to sell at the moment I'm very comfortable with my ability to pick up items you know so I have security and confidence in that, so I don't necessarily need to feel as if um, I need to grow and strive for something, um, you know, completely out there or whatever. I feel very comfortable in the position I'm at. So, yeah, with that being said, I suppose I'll leave it there for this sales update, guys. It will have been a little bit of a longer one today, but I will have shared with you a few, uh, a few more sales than just the 10, uh, the usual 10. So, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed that. Uh, and, yeah, I will see you in the next one. So I will see you very soon, guys.
I'll give you what I got The alcohol of that is flowing wild So grab yourself a can of mine